Hi, I'm Louie Anderson, and I'm in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. So, Louie, here we are, season four of Baskets. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. It's amazing. I know, and so much has happened. So much has happened. And yet, what I like to call this is low-stakes comedy, because you can settle in and have an, have an episode where two people are introducing cats to each other. I love that. I love it. You know, well, people do that at home. Yeah. Constantly. People, do you ever see people, you go over and they have their cat and they go, no, don't you like him? <laughs> you know, where they talk to the cat, you're not even in the conversation. He won't hurt you. That's what's um, so genius about Christine is that she is so relatable. She's a wonderful foil to Zach Galifianakis's craziness. Yes, she is a wonderful foil to Zach and, and Zach playing two characters, so... I get a crazy Dale character, and I get a really heartfelt, sweet Chip character, and it's really nice. And, um, you know, over these four years, I've really become so maternal with Zach that, you know, I'm, you know, if he's got some lint on or something, I'll take it off. And, <laughs> you know, if he's got food on his face, I'll wipe. I'm very, it's really funny how I have, you know, taken it seriously. I'm super concerned for him as a human being. I was wondering, um, because you play his mother uh, for both Chip and Dale, right. uh, I was wondering if you have one thing that you're super proud of with Zach and then one thing that you wish he wouldn't do, just like a mother. You know, I'm super proud that Chip is such a kind human being, mm -hmm. and I'm super frustrated that he can't make up his mind on anything, what to do or where to go or... <laughs> You know, and he seems to be a little wandering, and it makes Christine very nervous because yeah. Christine charges forward all the time. But in this fourth season, I find uh, uh, the character and um, the show uh, contemplating a lot of things, and Christine is having to make some of the same decisions about her life that the Chip character has been making about his. So there's a nice parallel there, which is really nice. They become really close and wonderful friends in this episode, in this season, actually. I see that. I see that happening in this yeah. season. I see, uh, more, uh, like, even more warmth than in previous seasons. Yeah, I think Zach finally likes me. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a mean way, but I think Zach has, feels that I really am uh, out to, you know, be his best interest as a mother and as an, a fellow actor. Right. You know, because we really are close this year, and we've had some uh, scenes where both of us got very emotional. You know, there are times when I got, you know, like gut punched in this season. You mm -hmm. know, where I was in a scene, and I, it hit me so hard, but I didn't. But later on in the day, it kind of like I go, oh, my God. You know, I said to myself, do you think my mom was ever this happy? You know, because mm -hmm. that, you know, those kind of things. Or did my mom make the right choices? Or was she forced into making choices that, you know, kind of compromised who she wanted to be? So mm -hmm. I find myself as that character and the mother of Chip and Dale, um, and also the son of my real mom. So mm -hmm. I find all that stuff going on in me, and it's been a very emotional time for me. Mm -hmm. And even now I get a little choked up thinking about how, you know, deep this season is. Because I feel like the first season was like a big pot of stew cooking, Mm -hmm. And then this one is like the the perfect brew and the perfect stew that, you know, to eat. You know, it's just it's just been really heartfelt for me. Yeah. I got a lot out of it as an actor and as a, as a comedian and as a son. Now, uh, the character of Christine inspired you to write a book for your mom. It did. I came home one day and I just said, I got to write my mom yeah. a letter. She was long deceased, 1990, God rest her soul. And uh, so I said, hey, I haven't written my mom since she passed on and I just started writing and started pouring out of me and it became a book it was really weird I didn't want to write another book mm -hmm. really because it's a lot of work and I'm really lazy and um, but I, this book was really important and the more I got into it the more questions I had for my mom and mm. I'll tell you if your mom's alive be sure you try to make a connection or become friends with them they make it very difficult a lot of times moms and dads <laughs> but I think it's something that's worth all the effort you put into it Absolutely. of course you know some relationships can't be fixed and some people don't want to fix them but I don't care who you are those things nag at you they're deep within you and you know you came from those people 
you came especially from your mom. She bore you. And so I think sometimes we forget that they could be our friends and that they gave up. What did they give up? I always wanted to ask my mom, what did you give up to have me and all of us kids? Were you going to be something? Were you going to be an actress? Could you have been, you know, the first woman president? All those kind of things. Um, <clears throat> was there a difference between writing that book for your father and writing the book for your mother? Like, what was the difference? Yeah. There's a, lo a long time span between the two. Well, the book to my dad was uh, somewhat of an indictment. Mm. You know, why didn't you love me? That type of thing from a much more immature Louis Anderson. Yeah. And a really a hurt child. Mm -hmm. Much more that. And to my mom, it's a love letter. You know, it's a questioning love letter. You know, why'd you do this? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you, why did you give up my sister to another family? You know, her, her sister, my mom let my sister live with her sister because her sister didn't have any children. And I think it really screwed up my sister mm -hmm. and screwed us up in a way. But I know my mom's intentions were probably really pure and loving towards her sister. You know, my mom was always trying to make someone else feel good, and that's what I try to do with the Christine character. Mm -hmm. And in that way, sometimes uh, it becomes challenging because when you're trying to make other people feel better, you you might end up kind of stepping on their toes. Almost always. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think? I mean, yeah. when you're trying, if you can't keep, like I always say, uh, stay out of it. I'll say yeah. to people, they'll ask me something, I go, stay out of it. This is none of your business. <laughs> yeah. And they seem offended, and I go, really, seriously. So, I'm, like, just yesterday, I wanted to get involved with these writers that I'm working with and try to change their project, not knowingly at first. <laughs> right. But then I went, oh, Louie, you got you to stay out of this. Yeah. Because, you know, people who mean well, especially Midwesterners, you know, are also driven by, I think I know what's best for them. And mm -hmm. that's a big mistake because you don't know really know what's best for anybody. Yeah. I mean, I think I do. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a common thing that we get involved in people's lives because we don't want to deal with our own lives, maybe. Right. The, uh, the older that we get, the more we feel like uh, we, we have something to say about what other people are doing, especially younger people. And you know what I've learned on this show, actually, is I have, I have less to say. Yeah. Because... You know, like, everything plays out in its own time, mm -hmm. and it does for each person in a different way. And I think the hardest thing is to let people go through that life experience. I always talk to young comics about comedy, because mm. uh, I'm so old. And um, they say, you know, they, they try to bait me into telling them stuff that will help them. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and I'm glad to do it. Mm -hmm. I doubt they would listen, but I'm glad to do it. But I always tell them the really ride of life is in getting there. Once you get there, then everything changes. It's turned upside down. You no longer are going to be treated as you were as that comedian on stage with just your jokes. Because that's really the, that's, that's the essence of it. Mm -hmm. The journey and how I got here, definitely the most exciting and wonderful things that happen. Even though I've had some really wonderful things happen in retrospect with my career, mm -hmm. that was the money. That was the real money because nobody else got to see that. Nobody else tinkered with it. Mm -hmm. You did it on your own and you got where you were going. Mm -hmm. You worked really hard to get there. And I think that's what it's really about. I think the journey. Like when you say, why does somebody want to run a marathon? I think for the run, yeah, not for the finish. But for the run, because the finish, I know, oh, I'm all done. Yeah. Are you saying that when you were a younger comic, maybe less known, you had to kind of fight to get laughs, and then as you have become established, uh, the room is different? Mariah, I never had to fight to get laughs. All right. <laughs> I never did. I, I own the room from day one. True. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, like it was really hard to go on after somebody was juggling fire, you know, on a show or playing a guitar or doing stuff that, you know, and I'm coming out and go, do you like butter? <laughs> Have you seen butter? It's really something. You know, where I'm talking about, how about your mom? Isn't she nice? What? What is this guy talking about? So, I mean, the concepts and to develop your concepts, you're right. Mm -hmm. I think I was, 
I was definitely uninformed. My first special is so good. When I watch it, I go, I can't get back to that. Mm -hmm. You can't get back to that. I'm trying to work on a special that will get back to that, mm -hmm. where I don't come in as Louis Anderson, which is very difficult to do. I like to just, you know, you know, because I was just a kid that worked in Minnesota, and I shot my special with PBS, and I couldn't get it sold anywhere, so I said, let's shoot it and do a benefit for it, you know, and sell it as, a, as one of those, you know, pledge drives. Uh -huh. And it was very successful, and then I sold it after that. But that first special is the best work, and I think a, a special that inspired a lot of comics, at least that's what they told me. Uh, I was just speaking to Fred Willard recently. Oh, we were I talking love Fred, about, by the uh, way. Yes, yeah, we were talking about the art of being a talk show host. Um, how has the late night talk show scene changed? Well, I did Conan last night. It was a complete dream. It was me, yeah. him, and Andy Richter. And we're so comfortable with each, with each other. We just threw out the stuff. It was a killer set. You know, and, and when Conan says, do you kill every time you come on here? And I go, well, why, why am I not on here more? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how a comic thinks. But you know what it is, is I did, I, I was born for show business. I was born to sit in that chair next to somebody who's going to talk to me because I'm so full of myself. And, you know, I'm a comedian and I'm, I was built to be funny. I mean, I, I was built to have the funny quick line, you know, it was just in my, it's in my psyche. And... Then I got to be a host of a talk show when Joan Rivers, you know, when I filled in for her. And I realized that I never want to be that guy. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's a much, it's much more to limit the amount of time because it takes a lot of work, those guys do, to make it effortless. All the late night people, I applaud them because they're so good at it. And the daytime people. It takes a lot of work on producers and writers, and you know, then they make it seem like they're just friends and they're talking, but they're not. They don't even know each other. And so with Conan, it was so comfortable. You know, he's a comedian, he's funny. We were pros. It felt like pros sitting around talking, and I think the audience enjoyed it. And um, I stole stuff from the dressing room, <laughs> you know, in, in honor of my mom, because she would always say, aren't these cute? You think I should take them? <laughs> Have, go, has the swag gotten better? The swag is better. Like Conan's <laughs> is a nice, nice swag stuff. You know, Excellent. seriously, it's good stuff. Uh, so since winning your Emmy, has the role changed for you at all? Has playing Christine changed since winning that Emmy, or is it? Kind uh, of well, now I'm more conscious. Yeah. Of not being conscious. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, don't try to change this character. That's right. how you won the Emmy. Yeah. So I think we went back to that. I think I didn't really try to change it at all. Maybe last year Christine had a lot more fun. So mm -hmm. people let us kind of like Jonathan, you know, Chrysler from Portlandia fame. He let us kind of let loose. Christine yeah. met uh, Lori Grenier, yeah. uh, you know, and she was all like jacked up because of it, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> and took Martha to Vegas to a strip show last year. <laughs> right. and, you know, Christine was like, yes, she, she was living. And she pushed Martha around, and I think this character is more contemplative this year, but mm -hmm. still pushing people around. She can't help herself. <laughs> she can't. She's a but, um, yeah, so I think winning that Emmy, and then at first I was, like, disappointed because I missed the Emmy for this year mm. by 13 days. Yeah. And I went, was that on purpose? Was that some sort of shot at me? No. <laughs> uh, it's not about you, Louis, isn't it? But I realized um, that everything in my life, luckily, has come. And has been right. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, you know, I did uh, The Tonight Show. It was really important, the Johnny Carson thing. And then I did the Rodney Dangerfield special. I did the Coming to America. I got a little part in Ferris Bueller's. Mm -hmm. I did some really nice, I did The Family Feud. I'm a huge uh, game show junkie. Yeah. I did Life with Louie, an animated show. I did all these wonderful things that were just presented to me. Would you like to do it? We'd like you to do it. And so I have really been lucky that way. And I never thought I would get an acting part that would let me show how I can act. Because mm -hmm. I was always bad in, in auditions. You know, I'd freeze up in the audition and go, blah! <laughs> you know, it just would be terrible. Over, oh, just like, what do you do here? What do I do, to do here? <laughs> anyway, then in 61, I got that call that said, hey, do you want to play Zach Galifianakis' mom? And I go, yes, I do. I am ready for it. I'm in a skirt right now. <laughs> <laughs>
Louis Anderson, thank you so much for being thank here. You, We're Laura. looking forward to season four of Baskets on FX.